tonight, we're going to continue with the 12 steps. It's not the steps that we're going to be doing, though. We've realized that during this process, it's going to take more than just 12 weeks to get through this. And we need encouragement each and every week. And so tonight, we're talking about the missteps of 12 steps. And the first one we're going to talk about is, I can quit tomorrow. Because see, as we go through this, we sometimes fall down. And we'll say, well, OK, I'll get back up and I'll quit tomorrow. I'm going to do it tonight. Whatever that do it is, whether it's drinking or drugs or lying or boosting or whatever, or thinking bad about somebody or being jealous about somebody, I'll stop it tomorrow. Well, tomorrow has no power or strength to initiate change in our lives. Today, right now, is where the power is to start it today. Waiting even one more day is a decision to stay on a path that was proven to be destructive. When we wait, we say, no, not today. How do you know what life will be like tomorrow? Your life is like the morning fog. It's here a little while, then it's gone. And that's from James 5, the fifth chapter. It says, look here, you who say today or tomorrow, now we are going to a certain town and we will stay a stay there a year. We will do business there and make a profit. How do you know what your life will be like tomorrow? You might not even be here tomorrow. We might not even be here the rest of today. We don't know. That's why now is the time to make the decision. Now is the time to start. You know, we have our excuses, and I know some of those excuses. Some of us, we, some of us may be short of food. I know when I was growing up and I used to do a little boosting, and some of y'all know what I'm talking about, boosting. But you know, if you're short of food and things like that, staples, to go into a store and say, sir or ma'am, I just need a loaf of bread and maybe some bologna and a small jar of mayonnaise. I just don't have it, and I have miles to feed. More than likely, you're going to get a yes. You're not asking for money. You're asking for a staple. And doing that yes for those necessary things that you need, or doing that asking for the necessary things that you need, is better than doing 10 to 20 years in jail for something that little. Sometimes we say, I'll start tomorrow because I need to stay a little calm for tonight. You're going to be shaky and upset tomorrow, too. So now is the time to start. When we say that we're going to start tomorrow and we're going to wait, are we really serious? And only you can answer that. Are you really serious about what you want, what you want to happen? Father, I thank you for all the people and the help that you've put into our lives that you've provided to win this fight. But Lord, I have to be honest. It's so hard to hold on. I'm weak and my mind takes me to, takes me to wonder about what's going on. And my body wants to continue as I've been. Help me, please. Give me the strength. Be the rock. 
Be the fortress that I need around me so sin doesn't enter in and that I don't go out. Help me every day to walk a little bit more by faith. Amen. Greetings, friends. Thank you for joining us for Meet Us at the Well. Today's message is entitled, Our Constant God in a Changing World. All around us, in our communities, in our nation, there are all kinds of changes taking place. But no matter what these changes are, whether they bring good or they bring bad, whatever the case might be, our God is a constant God who is still in control of everything. I like to say it this way. He still has the whole world in his hands. And so I hope that you are blessed by the message and, and share the message, share the link, encourage others to join us on this Facebook premiere message. And, and in the future, thank you for tuning in. God bless you. Heaven smile upon you. Numbers, the 23rd chapter, verse 19, God is not a human that he should lie, not a human being that he should change his mind. Does he speak and not act? Does he promise and not fulfill? In James, the first chapter, verse 17, we read, every good and perfect gift comes from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights, who does not change like the shifting shadows. 
And then again, Hebrews, the 13th chapter, verse 8 tells us Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. In an in a article, I read an article published by Embraced by Truth. An article was entitled, God is Constant. And, and let me read to you what it says. It says about God and his consistency being constant. It says, all his perfections are without variation, without addition or subtraction, and without progression or mutation. He does not increase nor decrease in strength or in wisdom. His glory does not fade nor becomes more glorious. His righteousness and his truth are not supplemented nor diminished. His knowledge does not expand. His decrees do not change. His promises are steadfast and his word remains unadjusted for all eternity. We're talking about a sovereign God who is constant and does not change. And we can depend on that, the fact. We can depend on the fact that he does not change. Psalms 33 and 11 says, The Lord's plan stands firm forever. His intentions can never be shaken. Ephesians, the second chapter, verse 10 states, for we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works. That's something that seems like it was planned back in the beginnings of time. Isaiah 40 verse 8 says, The grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of our God stands for what? It stands forever. One of the things that has blessed me in recent years are my thoughts about my grandmother and others who have been a part of my life or were a part of my life from the very beginning. And what I've discovered about them is that they were people who lived by faith, trusting in Jesus Christ. And I could always depend on them to give me truth and to show love and show mercy, especially when I didn't deserve it. I could always depend on them. I was proud to know that from the time that I've come to know them until they died or even the ones that continue to live, they walk faithfully with the Lord. They are consistent in their faith. And I hold on to that and I cherish that. But how much greater is knowing that the God of creation, who we know, who we've come to know and trust, has been faithful, great in his faithfulness throughout the ages and does not change. And in every segment of history and in every season of people's lives, those who trust him could hold on to God's unchanging hand and discover that even if things didn't work out exactly the way they wanted them to or the way it should, God's way always was and is the best way. That's a blessed assurance we have especially while we travel down this path, this long and winding path of transformation over our lifetime to be what God will have us to be. The best way to understand how consistent God is, is to grow with him and to realize how he demonstrates his grace and his mercy and his compassion for us when we're doing right and when we're struggling, but we keep on hanging in there and we go to him it's like going to the clothes closet you want to hang your 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 coat on a hanger and you know that 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 rod is going to be there we go to God in prayer and we know I'm not trying to say God is a, a, a rod in a curtain but it's just a metaphor but we can go to God and he will always be there we are reminded of this by the fact that summer and winter springtime and harvest sun moon and stars in their courses above are the evidence that God is still in charge, God is consistent, and that we can depend on him because we depend on the seasons to change, for the sun to rise in the east and set in the west, and to stars, then the stars to sparkle in the night. And we've seen that every day of our lives. And so we know in our lifetime that God is constant and never changes. 
We also know this because of his holy word as a reminder of his watchful eye over humanity. And he's ready to aid all those who will give their hearts to him and he will exercise and he will execute mercy and grace upon all of us who trust him. And we only get to know that as we live through life to see that he is constant in all of that. And we are reminded of God's unchanging, constant presence through the workings of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Lord, thank you for the Holy Spirit that helps us in the midst of our troubles and our storms. And when we're tempted to go one way as opposed to following your way, the Holy Spirit speaks to us and it reminds us of the things that we read in the word. It guides us and we directs us. And because of that, the more you experience that in your life, the more you'll know the consistency consistency, the continuity, the constants of God. And then four, God calls on all of us who trust him and love him and know that he is a constant God. He calls on us through Jesus Christ to love and to fulfill a purpose of serving others through Jesus Christ. And this is evidence when we do the work of kingdom building, when we do the work of ministry through Jesus Christ, this is evidence that God is a constant and a consistent God.